My name is Sean Berry. I'm an assistant professor at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. When I did my PhD, I worked on group 13 compounds and I got involved in CVD. And then I uh, did a postdoc for Roy Gordon for several years, two and a half years. And then when he transitioned into ALD, I followed him. Our focus is on precursor design, and we're mainly concerned about thermolysis mechanisms in the gas phase and at the surface, so we study those. We like to invent new ligand sets, and so we've been doing that for a few years. We're mostly synthetic, so we're very, very well equipped to make and test compounds, and we've got a homemade ALD reactor, so we can do some process development. I would say our latest or our best development is the copper precursor we've just published. Um, it uses a novel ligand set, an N-heterocyclic carbene and an amide. Uh, it's, it's nicely volatile and very controllable volatility, and it's very, very thermally stable. And that's one thing we wanted to design into copper. Um, I should point out that from a results point of view, this has led us to uh, apply for a patent, and we've started a company called Precision Molecular Design. And that company is to do uh, precursor development for, for other people. So uh, copper is the first, and hopefully not the last, precursor from there. I started in 2003, so this is my 10th year anniversary. And when I started, uh, it was to develop precursors, and we've been doing precursor development for 10 years. We've been doing deposition for about six years. Um, but since we made our own tool, that's been a bit challenging. Right now, there's 10 people. Um, we have one tool, and we've got two on order. One should arrive hopefully in September, and one will ar arrive in December. And with this new um, development through Precision, the, the company, we will probably take on about five more people. We start a postdoc uh, in September for that, and then we will hire probably two graduate students rapidly after that. Um, and all of this is in conjunction with the Green Centre Canada, which is located near us. And there, there are probably three people working on these projects as well. So overall right now, we're about 13 people, and that's including undergraduates. And in the near future, that number will probably rise to about 20. I, I would say the main challenge for uh, pre precursor, or for uh, process development is that we when we make a precursor, we can't, of course, select its thermolysis and its volatility. And so we spend a lot of time trying to get low volatile or medium volatile precursors into the gas phase. And that can take up a lot of time and that can, um, on a homemade tool, cause a lot of problems. And so we've just recently purchased a, a PicoSun tool, actually two, one small thermal tool and one larger um, plasma tool, and with new bubbler designs, I think maybe this commercial tool will do a better job for us. I would say the general level is growing. When I started, I don't think there was another ALD tool in Canada, and certainly there wasn't anybody doing ALD research in academia in Canada. Now, there are probably 10 to 20 tools over all of Canada, and there are probably, I could think of some three very good researchers. There's probably a handful of researchers in academics doing some kind of ALD.
I think a lot of research groups in Canada are looking for turnkey ALD to solve other problems. There are several groups doing research in solid fuel cells, and Canada has always had a strong inorganic chemistry uh, in catalysis, and so there's a lot of interest in catalysis. Interestingly, microelectronics is a relatively weak sector in Canada from an industrial point of view, and so there's not very much research there. And of course, many, many uh, photovoltaic and solar cell groups are starting to look at ALD for backside passivation and, and that sort of thing. And so these newly developed systems that are particular for for application are starting to show up in Canada. The University of Western Ontario is a researcher named Andy Sun, and he's in the engineering department. He's done deposition on graphene, graphene oxide, and carbon nanotubes, and that's for fuel cells and lithium ion batteries. And uh, he uses a uh, Cambridge Nanotech Savannah tool. I think it's nice to know what people use as tools. Uh, the second one is Ken Cadian, and he's at the University of Alberta. And uh, that's also attached to Canada's National Institute of Nanotechnology. He uses a Kurt J. Lusker tool, and he does fundamental ALD process design, and he's heavily involved in fuel cells and catalysis as well. And then the third is David Emsley, and he's at McMaster University. I don't think he has an ALD tool, but he does chemistry development for uh, processes, and particularly around second precursors for copper deposition. In 2009, a Korean group led by, I think, Sun, uh, published a diethyl zinc paper, and he was also doing that research. And so in 2010, he followed, he followed that up with a larger study in chem materials, a very, very good paper. And that's um, more along the chemistry lines. There are a few other application-oriented groups, but I think these three are major contributors to ALD in Canada. I do. I think there is a growing interest. It will focus on non-microelectronic manufacturing. Um, it's been a recent development, I think, everywhere that people are installing nanofabrication facilities. And I think ALD is seen as a key tool for that kind of facility. And so I think as that grows across Canada, we will see a lot more uptake in ALD. Um, I think my message would be to study the chemistry of ALD. Um, I've seen ALD reactors in the past that have been built out of uh, spare parts in a drawer. And one of the strengths of ALD is the tool doesn't have to be very rigorous if the chemistry is very, very rigorous. And so I think the surface chemistry and the design of precursors, of course, uh, is a key factor in improving ALD design. In general, I'm very impressed with uh, reactor design and novel applications that are being built. I would say for precursor development, um, there's an ongoing need for better precursor delivery systems, bubblers that handle high temperature and fast pulsing. That will always make the job of delivering a precursor in the vapor phase easier. Um, I would say to enable uh, precursor design, a very forgiving reactor is probably the best. And so, of course, as the tools get better and better, we can do more and more and therefore want more from the tools. So there will always be room for improvement, I think. I like ALD Pulse. Um, we started one master's student and two undergraduates in the lab this year, and I sent them to ALD Pulse for background reading. That's an excellent application for this uh, service, this website. And uh, I'm doing a course on reactivity, and so I, I use some of the uh, filtered feeds from your, from your site as well. I think it's a great idea. 
I saw Miko's interview, and I agree that um, if we could couple the engagement the the ALD community has from LinkedIn with the resources available at ALD Pulse, this would be the best idea of the center for, for the ALD community to hang out in. Uh, I suppose so. Study chemistry, that would be my message. <laughs>